Homo heidelbergensis is a critical human species from the Middle Pleistocene. They lived between 300,000 to 600,000 years ago. We know from several beautifully preserved crania that this species had a large brain, within the lower range of modern human variation, and a less robust face than early fossil humans. We know from their long bones that they were tall, strong people. From their associated archaeology we know they were capable of producing beautiful tools such as the large hand axes found in huge numbers at Boxgrove in Sussex. But there are many unanswered questions. What was their lifestyle? What did they look like? Where did they live? And who exactly belongs to the species Homo heidelbergensis? Are they the ancestor of both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens? Homo heidelbergensis means Heidelberg man. Homo is the Latin word for human or man and Heidelbergensis is the Latin word for Heidelberg, the city in Germany where the first Homo heidelbergensis fossil was discovered in 1907. In 1907, an ancient human jaw was discovered in a quarry at Mauer, a village near Heidelberg, Germany. The jaw had small, human-like teeth but was unlike modern human jaws in being extremely large and heavy-boned. The unique features of this Mauer one jaw led to it being named a new species the following year. However, the species Homo heidelbergensis has only become more accepted since the end of the 20th century with the discovery of additional fossils that had features intermediate between those of earlier and later human species. Some important specimens include Boxgrove 1, tibia discovered in 1993 in Boxgrove, West Sussex, England. This shin bone has been gnawed at each end by an ancient carnivore but the remaining bone shows its owner was more strongly built than modern humans. The large ridges which run down the back of the bone are places where muscles attach to the bone and indicate that this individual had very large and powerful leg muscles. Cabway 1 or Broken Hill Skull, discovered in 1921 in Cabway, Zambia. This skull was the first fossil of a human ancestor to be discovered in Africa. It combines primitive features such as a wide face, thick arching brow ridges and a sloping forehead with a large brain capacity of 1,280 cubic centimeters. The date of this specimen is uncertain, but it may be 300,000 years old. Saldania, a skullcap discovered in 1953 in Elansfontein, South Africa. This skullcap closely resembles the Broken Hill One skull in having large brow ridges, a broad, sloping forehead and a rear skull wall that is vertical rather than rounded or sloping. Arago 21 skull and lower jaw discovered in Arago Caves, Tauteville, France. Excavations since 1964 have revealed a number of human fossils at Arago, including this skull and jaw from different individuals. Thousands of stone tools and the bones of many types of animals have also been uncovered at this site. The Arago 21 skull is relatively complete but it was distorted either before or during fossilization. Its features are typical of this species but its size and robust facial features suggest that it is the skull of a young male. It has been dated as being between 250,000 and 400,000 years old. Homo heidelbergensis fossils tend to have features that are intermediate between those of Homo ergaster, its ancestor, and either Homo neanderthalensis or Homo sapiens. Fossil evidence regarding body size and shape is currently limited but leg bones indicate they were tall, reaching about 180 centimeters in height and had relatively long legs like their earlier ancestor, Homo ergaster. The shin bones thickness and bony ridges indicate that these people were strongly built. Their brain was large, averaging approximately 1,250 cubic centimeters in size, representing 1.9% of their body weight. Also their frontal and parietal lobes of the brain were enlarged and may indicate an increase in brain complexity. Their skull shows a moderate, double arched brow ridge and a short, sloping forehead lay above the eyes. The brow ridge was more arched than that of the earlier species, Homo ergaster. The sloping forehead resembled those found in earlier species rather than the vertical foreheads of modern humans. Their jaws were shorter than those of earlier species resulting in a face with only a slight projection. The lower jaw was strongly built for the attachment of strong chewing muscles. 
and as with earlier species, the lower jaw did not have a protruding, pointed chin. Their teeth were arranged in the jaw so that they formed a parabolic shape, which means they were curved at the front then splayed out toward the back. Their teeth were smaller than those of earlier species but were larger than those of modern humans. Lower legs were relatively long. Their limb proportions such as these represent an adaptation to tropical conditions as they provide a larger skin surface to help cool the body. These limb proportions are similar to those found later in Homo sapiens and contrast with the short lower legs that developed in the Neanderthals. Leg bones tended to be thick and strongly built. Homo heidelbergensis hunted large animals for food. The fossilized bones of these animals have shown that large animals including rhinos, hippopotamus, bears, horses and deer were targeted. These animals were skillfully hunted then butchered in an orderly fashion that suggests that these people were working in cooperative groups. Between 600,000 and 200,000 years ago, the climates of Africa and Europe experienced a series of warm and cool phases and the move from Africa to Europe subjected these people to generally colder climates. Homo heidelbergensis people spread out of Africa and had established populations in Europe and possibly also in southern Asia by about 500,000 years ago. The tools made by Homo heidelbergensis were mostly used for hunting and butchery. Most of their tools were of the type previously used by Homo ergaster. These were large stone tools with flakes removed from two sides to produce the bifacial stone hand axes, cleavers and carvers classified as Mode 2 technology. Some later populations are known to have also made tools from deer antler, bone and wood. These materials were modified into scrapers, hammers and sophisticated wooden throwing spears. Fire was used, although further evidence is needed to establish whether this was a controlled use of fire. About 300,000 years ago, a severe cold, dry period began and the Sahara became a barrier to movement between Africa and Eurasia. Although movement may have been possible between Europe and Northern Asia. At this time, populations in Africa and in Europe were isolated from one another and regional differences began to appear. Which leads us to the big question, is Homo heidelbergensis the ancestor of both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens? In paleoanthropology, the middle Pleistocene is often termed the muddle in the middle because the species-level classification of archaic human remains from this time period has been heavily debated. The ancestors of modern humans and Neanderthals diverged during this time period, and by convention, Homo heidelbergensis is typically considered the last common ancestor of both of these. A popular scenario has Homo heidelbergensis evolving in Africa from some descendant form of Homo ergaster. A portion of the population then emigrated to Europe and evolved into Neanderthals while a portion of the remaining African stock evolved toward anatomically modern humans. There is good evidence that Homo heidelbergensis gave rise to Neanderthals. There are skulls from the sites of Erhingsdorf, Germany, Fontechevaid, France, and Cima de los Husos, Spain, that appear to be transitional in that they exhibit characteristics seen in Neanderthals such as similar brow ridge morphology, enlarged facial sinuses, occipital bun. It is rare in paleoanthropology to have such good support for continuity in physical characteristics between ancestor and descendant species. And also good evidence they gave rise to humans too, with a large brain size compared to other archaic hominins, an anatomically modern frontal bone and cranial base than other archaic hominins. Comparison of Neanderthal and modern human DNA suggests that the two lineages diverged from a common ancestor, sometime between 500,000 and 800,000 years ago. This ancestor is, very likely, Homo heidelbergensis. Of course this theory and many others about our ancient ancestors are still ongoing debates, and nothing is fact yet, but asking these questions are what makes us better understand our past. And hopefully one day, we will know for sure where we came from.